Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. I teach at the University of Colorado, previously at two campuses of the University of California, and I'm a translator of Norse myths and sagas in addition to a television and film consultant on these topics. Today, what I want to talk about in one of my weekend quick takes, just a short video on a subject in Old Norse, is the word berserker, Old Norse berserker. This is a compound word, the second element of which is pretty transparently serker, shirt. But the first element uh, permits two possible interpretations. Related languages like English and Old Norse often have similar pairs of homonyms, and uh, here we have the familiar English homonym of bear, the animal, and bear, uh, as in naked, uh, also manifested in Old Norse. In Old Norse, bear, as in naked, is the adjective B-E-R-R, bear, and then bear, the animal, is bjorn, but this is foreign from the root ber, this is Proto-Norse ber news, with the u having caused breaking in the e, that's why you get j hooko there, not e in Old Norse, but the root is still bear. So just possibly, this could either be bear shirt, as in the animal bear shirt, shirt perhaps made from the fur of this animal, or bear shirt, as in like naked of shirt, bear of shirt. And we're not exactly sure which interpretation to favor in the origin of this word. Now there is a parallel term, ulvheden, roughly wolf shirt, that is also sometimes used of the berserker. That would certainly make us think that the explanation is um, the bear, the animal shirt. But it's also interesting that in Inglinga saga, when Snorri Sturluson is describing the berserkers, and uh, their berserksgangr, the action of going berserker, he describes it as a gift from Odin that makes his men resistant to fire and iron and makes them fight fiercely. Uh, he also mentions that they fight without armor, and that might then prejudice us toward thinking of it as the bear, B-A-R-E, shirt explanation. It's just not clear which one the original one was, and it's possible that whichever one was original that different people later on interpreted it different ways and that that contributed to the development of the mythos of the berserker, um, contributing to the notion of them perhaps wearing no armor, or perhaps being bear-like in some specific way. In terms of uh, the, the associations of this word, one thing that I would point out is that just like the word Viking in Old Norse, vikingar, this is not a positive word in Old Norse. It's not something that someone is likely to describe himself as in a good way. Uh, but just as the word Viking comes to sort of get associations of, of, of toughness, of course, and, and uh, fighting capacity in our modern languages, Berserker has two, and of course that is based on something in the sagas, but we have to note that the Berserker, or the person called a Berserker in Old Norse, is typically not a good guy. So for example, in the saga of Egil Skallagrimsson, Egil, who himself is not exactly pure of heart, uh, fights duels against Berserkers, including one from Sweden. It's usually its own bad sign in the uh, Icelandic or Norwegian sagas because the Swedes are associated with these barbarous old practices. Uh, but this uh, Swedish berserker goes around the Norwegian countryside challenging men to duels for their wives or sisters or daughters or nieces. And it is finally Egil who has to challenge him to a duel and, uh, and defeat this man. Uh, very, very rarely do you have a berserker who could even be considered kind of neutral. One of the few characters who's maybe closer to that would be uh, Angantyr, the first Angantyr in the saga of Hereborn Haithrek. Uh, he is a uh, one of 12 berserkers. Berserkers often come in groups of 12, which is actually not a number that usually is all that significant in Old Norse, but seems to be associated with berserkers. And Angantyr, Hjorvarður, and uh, his other 10 brothers fight against uh, Eru Odd, uh, Orvar Ultr, and uh, Hjolmar, on the island of Somsoy, an island often associated with magic, and after Angantyr is killed, his great sword Tyrfinger is claimed by his daughter Hervor, who comes and breaks into his mound and has this basically rock opera exchange with him about how she wants the cursed sword, but he doesn't want to give it to her, and finally she gets it from him. And I've talked about that a little bit in my video about the waking of Angantyr. But he's still not necessarily a positive character, it's still him and his brothers who are the aggressors in that situation. So consider that just like in words of, of more recent extraction, like outlaw or, uh, or bad man in certain circles, things like that, we think of them as cool, kind of edgy, but in the sort of less ironic culture of, say, the Old West, talking about outlaws and bad men, 
or the Viking Age, talking about Vikings and Berserkers, uh, they are more unironically actually bad things to call somebody because the Berserker is, of course, even if he's favored by Odin, as Snorri says he is in Ingling Saga, he is still a wild and unpredictable character who is likely to challenge you to a duel for something that you don't want to lose and probably have <laughs> no legitimate reason to part with. Well, I hope this has been a somewhat illuminating or informative look at this subject for you. And from beautiful Colorado, I'm wishing you all the best.